Alright, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to Law and Order Bakumatsu Edition. I guess. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's keep going. Trial part two. We have the jury uh somewhat split, so we can continue the trial. I guess. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> Dramatic sweating. I presume we had to do this call to the recent examination. Uh, uh, yeah, Governor. I did go, but it. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Oh, blimey! This is going to be hard work. Alright, oh, right. It's Law and Order Meiji Restoration. There we go. That's more correct. Earlier in the trial, you gave the following testimony about your actions after you entered Windy Banks. Well, it was Bedlam soon as. Weren't it? It was, Nash, it was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes on me Lucy Lockets. However, that was a lie. You brothers. Come blind me! On the night in question, you rifled through the items on the victim's counter. We never done nothing of the sort. How do you figure that out? Each lie that passes your lips serves to increase the severity of your punishment. And that, gentlemen may deal a crushing blow to your chances of ever seeing the light of day again. <laughs> a thought worth pondering, perhaps. Say no more go we and we'll blab, we'll squeak, we'll beach! Alright, we didn't knock a few things over, but we weren't rifling for nothing. It was when we heard the gunshot, see? They made us both jump and all that stuff went flying. Love me, it didn't half give me a fright. We was thinking it should come out the door and get us next. They stuck everything back when we found it and scarped it straight into him in the black. We could have shot the pawnbroker, see? We never even had a chance, did we? Uh, not ransack, governor, no. That's right, Nash, that's right. It's more like we tidied up. Yeah. Nah, sorry. By your own admission, these brothers entered a pawnbroker under dubious circumstances. However, they panicked and fled on hearing the gunshot, having first made good their mess. The way you say it, they hardly sound like roughs at all. We don't, Nash, we don't. Can't he make us sound a bit more... cutthroat? It can't just be coincidence that these men showed up at Windybanks that night. There's more to your testimony than meets the eye. I'm sure of it. Hold it! If that's the case, then why didn't you testify to that effect in the first place? Well, you know... We ain't exactly squeaky clean, are we? We ain't, Nash, we ain't. If we admitted to something like that, people would think we was up to no good. 
Well said, Ringo, me or China. We'd only land ourselves in even more trouble. And in fact, now, as a result of lying in your previous testimony, that's exactly what you've done. Landed yourself in even more trouble. Uh, well, um... That's rotten luck. Says the rotten apple eater. Witnesses. Explain your actions to the court. Why did you ransack the victim's counter? We never ransack nothing. Right, Nash, right. More like we tidied the place up. Uh, sorry. Hmm. I wonder. What if they're not lying about it? Maybe it was already ransacked. Like, it was already, like, askew and stuff when they came in. That's probably the twist, right? They like to do that. Hold it! So what you're saying is... The sound of the gunshot shocked you so much, you knocked all of those things off the counter? Well, it shocked one of us that much, yeah? This bag of nerves needs to learn to keep his shirt on. Look, it was loud, alright? Blimey, me dead granny would have woken up at that bang. Big Bravia screamed like a bloomin' baby and fell over on the counter. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull whatnot. That got tangled up in some marionette, what knocked over a picture frame, what knocked them scales on the floor. You really mastered working quietly then. What a racket! My granny would have scared back into her grave at a clatter like that! So in short, the gunshot took you by surprise. And then some! I mean it was quite a smells and then all of a sudden... BAM! What's up, Gregson? Excuse me! Excuse me, Gregson. Inspector Gregson, do you have something to add? Like I keep saying, I don't appreciate being lumped in with these scoundrels. No, something to add about their testimony. You seem to react just now at what Mr. Skalkin said. Did it make you think of something? It's probably nothing, of course. I wouldn't even bother to mention it, only... Well, the fact is, cases don't get solved if you ignore the little details. How about you just tell us what's on your mind? As you know, we brought these fellas into the yard for questioning last night, and the statement they gave them told a slightly different story to what they're saying now. Uh, um, did it? You claimed you heard the victim shout something out before the gunshot. Might have, Gov, might have. Does ring a bell now you mention it. Granted, it's only a minor detail, but still. I can't help feeling like perhaps you've been a bit sloppy for testimony here, eh, fellas? Easy, easy. We'll get it right this time. That's it, yep. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. Then speak. Supplement your testimony with whatever details have miraculously returned to your questionable minds, sirs. Um, <laughs> right you are, Gov. <laughs> Your voice are decaying more and more as I keep as I keep doing them. <laughs> well, I guess that's working out, right? Because they're getting more frazzled. Does <laughs> hmm. he for the gun? Shall we heard a voice here? Yeah, no, give me that gun. Hold it! So in fact, you heard the voice and the gunshot almost simultaneously. We did, Gov, we did! Although, suppose if you're being honest, but you heard a kind of wavering voice before the yell and all? If, if you don't want to get shot, give me that gun! Bam! Kind of thing. Career in acting tragically missed. 
And where were the voices coming from? Could you tell? Of course we could. From the other side of the door behind the counter it was. From the storeroom where the victim was found dead. In the voice you heard, it was that of the victim, Mr. Windybank. On me granny's life! Cause it was. On his granny's life! Cause it was. So, that would mean... That you both knew Mr. Weedybank in the sound of his voice. Eh? So that would mean... What? What, Nash? What? Any ideas? Yes, yes, indeed. No, no, no. We, we didn't know the geezer. How am I supposed to deny it when that bloke in all the fancy club is giving us the evil eye? If you value your lives, you will ensure your testimony is accurate and true. But uh, on me granny's life it is! Uh, on his granny's life it must be! It's a good job his granny's dead. To summarize then, immediately after hearing the voice of the victim, you then heard hear the gunshot causing you to stumble and upset the items on the counter, scattering them over the shop floor. You make it sound like we're clumsy! Don't forget we tidied up after like good little boys. Anyway, the way I see it... The bloke what owned the place was older than a gun, so he should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. Hmm... You're saying that Mr. Windybank had a gun in his hands. Oh yeah, bet that was a sight, eh? Them two waving them guns at each other. Must have got pretty heated. I mean, just before he shouted out, we heard the geezer say, If you don't wanna get shot. Didn't really sound like he meant it, mate. More of an empty threat, you could say. Mr. Windybank was known to keep a revolver on his shop counter at all times. People say that to protect the articles in his keeping, he'd really put a bullet in someone's head if required. That someone being himself, of course. Well, he certainly sounded like he was ready to pull the trigger the other night. Only the person he was gonna should beat him to it. Cook this goose proper! Ready wish he squeezed the trigger from so wasting time shouting, gimme that gun! And it was directly after those words that you heard the gunshot. It was more or less at the same time, Gov. Give me that gun! Bam. Kind of thing. Yes, a career in acting very tragically missed. Then we heard the sound of someone hitting the deck. For everything went dead quiet. After that, we done a slap dash job tidying the place up. Lami didn't have given me a fry, but was thinking they should have come out the door and get us next. Okay. This already is new information, considering that, you know, there was only ever one gun found on the scene. Right? So Gina would have had the gun. If that's what they're going with. Hold it! So, you didn't try to open the storeroom door then? Not on your life! It went deathly quiet after that, it did. But the wind right up me! But anyway, the door was locked, weren't it? No way there was opening! Oh, they're lying about where the second gun was? Hmm. Well, I mean... I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. Honestly, it could be that they're just assuming they know what's going on behind there because they said they only heard the voices, right? So they, they must be assuming that they're waving guns at each other. They didn't actually see them. Yes, of course. It was locked from the inside or so we've been led to believe. It was, Gov, it was! From the inside. Right, so we had no way of knowing what was going on in there, did we? Yeah, see? Right. Unless there was some other way to get a view of the inside of the storeroom. Like through the keyhole or a spy hole, perhaps. Don't ring no bells! Don't light no lights! 
We had to cut and run before we noticed anything like that. We're still cutting our teeth in this game, see, but one day... We'll really cut the mustard. Please, cut it out. But as we know, behind that door was the victim's lifeless body, the accused not two feet away. Yes, unfortunately. Gino's in there unconscious, with the gun in her hand. To confirm, would it be correct to say that neither of you set foot inside the store? That's right, Gov, that's right! Couldn't have even if we wanted to. Stuck everywhere we found it and scampered straight into him in the black. Hold it! Yes, whereupon you fired a shot from your own gun. At Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Oh, um, yeah, um. He was a bit hasty there. He was, Nash, he was. Truth be told, I was already shaking like a leaf when you lot turned up. If you're shaking like a leaf, don't put a loaded gun in your hand. G good advice, miss. Good advice. Truth be told, my mind went totally blank. Before your mind goes totally blank, make sure you don't have a loaded gun in your hand. Mental note made, miss. After that, we legged it down the street, but... Apparently, we looked dodgy to the coppers to summit, so they clapped Darby's on us like winking. And after you've been handcuffed, the police found this revolver in your possession, correct? Um, well... Yeah. But listen, that proves it, doesn't it, eh? You couldn't have shot the pawnbroker, see? We never even had the chance, did we? Hold it! And why should we believe that? It whoa. Well, cause it's true, innit? it? The place was totally empty when we went in. At that time, the victim was already in the store, having been forced to open the door by the accused who had a gun to his head. In other words, on the night in question, these two witnesses never even laid eyes on the proprietor of the pawnbroker, Mr. Windybank. Correct? You've got it, mister! Down to a T! Hmm... So the Skulkin brothers never actually encountered Mr. Windybank. Is that really true, I wonder? That's it. That's the full extent of the testimony. What is it, Runo? You look very fierce. I could pour you some herbal tea if you're tired. Oh, thank you, but I'm fine. Being such a logical thinker, you'll probably laugh. But I feel as though these brothers are still hiding something. Something important. It is nothing more than a feeling, though. I've no proof to support it. Hmm. Well, feelings can be very logical at times. Sorry? People's expressions, the movements of their eyes, the words they choose. You can take all that in and your brain will quietly analyze it to come up with a feeling like you described. You've concluded there's something suspicious about this testimony without knowing why, that's all. I think you should trust your instincts. Iris, thank you. Sometimes, I think if she's 10 years old, I must be 5. Alright, I guess you gotta present something at this point. The blow bottle on the place is lower than the gun, so she just fires that gun and it could go. Well, this is contradicted by the fact that, you know, the gun was found not in, uh... You know, he wasn't holding it, Gina was holding it. So I assume... I assume this is the contradiction. Objection. The gun was found in Gina's... No? Hmm. This is clearly something odd about the last thing we've ever witness. Your behavior counts it. Damn it. <laughs> It'll be significantly easier if you just lower your hand. <laughs> Okay. Look what one of the police was holding a gun, so you just fired instead of yelling at the girl. Let's 
sign of a single discharge. Signs that a realm was fired. Is it this one? The she's holding the gun? Well, you know what? I have five chances. I can just try this one as well. Is it the picture? Is it the picture that she is holding the gun? Because, you know, that's uh, his gun. The bloke what owned the place was holding a gun, so he just fired it a year ago. But he couldn't fire the gun because Gina was holding it. Right? This is the one, right? Objection. Okay, yeah, it was the photo, not the gun itself. Fair enough. Or plug this in before it runs out of battery too. Yeah, I was on the right track, I just wasn't picking the right piece of evidence. Which, to be fair, the gun's description said that Gina was holding it, so it seemed like a reasonable thing to pick as well. It's all good though. Alright, give me a sec, chat. <clears throat> Alright. Charging. Yeah, okay. Should be charging. <clears throat> the saying that on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windybank, was wielding a gun. Is that correct? That's it, Gov. You got the picture. Yes, Nash. Yes, no question. Okay, hang on. Is this port faulty? Okay, there we go, it's charging now. And yet the photographic evidence from the time of the incident clearly shows that Mr. Windybank was not in possession of a firearm of any description. Objection! You surprise me. Does the defense really intend to highlight evidence that compromises the position of the accused even more? Ah. Third world, the defense is ready to establish that the photographic print presents it. The figure is sure to be short term for the victim's death. The chronology is severely lacking, counsel. Yeah, that's right. Too right, Nash, too right. The old geezer could have been able to about to turn the tables on the girl, eh? Hardly likely. Oh, if it just wants to have conclusive evidence. Look. Continue to cross examination, counsel. I hear my earlier warning, witnesses. The Skulkins never Skulkin. Okay, so it's not proof. I didn't get penalized for that though, so... one am 1.30 a.m. Okay, it's probably not this piece of evidence. Um, time of death, 1 to 1.30 a.m. Single bullet wound. No other visible signs of trauma. Single wound in the back. Oh, hang on. He should have just fired instead of yelling at the girl. If he was yelling at Gina, he would have been looking at her. But he was shot in the back. So that doesn't make sense. That's the contradiction. Objection. That's what it is. Okay, interesting. They let us present the other piece of evidence too, because that is somewhat relevant, but they didn't penalize for it. Alright, cool. So you're saying... That on the night in question, the victim, Mr. Windybank, was wielding a gun, is that correct? That's it, Gov, you got the picture. 
Yes, now she has, no question. And yet, photographic evidence obtained immediately after the incident clearly shows that Mr. Wittybank was not holding a firearm of any description. Eh, you what? Gordon Bennett, that ain't right. Objection. There can be no question that the victim's revolver was used in the incident. I would remind the court that Mr. Windybank's gun was found at the scene. Not only was it identified as the murder weapon, but it was found in the accused's hand. Yeah, that mole tooler used the victim's own gun to finish him off. Give me that gun! Bam! Kind of thing. Hold it! Stay exactly where you are, right there. Eh? If the crime had taken place as you so colorfully described in your testimony, it would give rise to an undeniable and significant inconsistency in the final moments you just acted out. <laughs> you intrigue me, my learned friend. But let's see some evidence to support your claim. Where is the proof that demonstrates this inconsistency in the witness's portrayal of the victim's, victim's final moments? Here's where we present the autops autopsy report, right? Single bullet wound and bullet entered the body from the back on the gently rising diagonal trajectory. Take that! According to your testimony, the witnesses claim to have heard a shout of Give me that gun, followed by the gunshot. Indeed, the two events happening almost simultaneously, or so we've been led to believe. Yes, that's right. Now, if that testimony is true, it would mean that at the moment of death, the victim and his attacker would have been facing each other. However, in the autopsy report, it clearly states that the victim died instantly after being shot from behind. Ah. So, as I stated before, there is an undeniable inconsistency in your testimony, Mr. and Mrs. Skalkin. Nah! But, but, but it's the God honest truth! It is, Nash, it is! And he was shot that night! The shopkeeper had a gun in his hand! We saw it with our own bleeding eyes! Did I hear you right just now? You actually saw Mr. Winniebank holding a gun. Um. Something like that might have slipped out. Ladies and gentlemen, you have all just heard the admission by these two witnesses. That on the night in question, they actually saw, with their own eyes, the victim wielding a gun. Which can only mean that despite their testimony to the contrary, the Skulkin brothers must have encountered the victim in person. Ah, uh, uh, um, Nash, um. Ah! Order! 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 And it is strange if it wants. Well, the, the thing is, it would supposed to. Um, it would seem that my previous warning fell on deaf ears. I made it quite clear that false witness would be the death of you. Am I to understand that you replaced the untruth of your original testimony with renewed lies? Um. Ever so sorry, Governor. Truth is see we um Cut it out, Nash, cut it out! If he blab now, you know what he'll do to us. He who are you talking about? Let me make your position here perfectly clear. You will talk. There is no other option available to you. Uh. Bruv, come on, the game's up! But buddy we have our guts forgot us! In case it hasn't quite sunk in yet. No matter how hard you try to hide it, the truth will come out. Uh, um. On the night in question, it is now apparent that you brothers met face to face with the victim. I demand that you testify again to explain the precise circumstances under which this meeting took place. Um. Well. Do we have to? On pain of death. I suggest you make yourselves fully aware that this is your very last chance to tell the truth. Uh, 
Alright, so we just got inside the cabin, heaved a sigh of relief, and the geezer showed his mug. Give me that gun, he bellowed, and then he flew at us like he was possessed. I thought we had it! For an old geezer, the bloke was strong as an ox. He chucked me over the counter. I put me gun on him, and then he licked it from the door to the back room. And then, had nothing to do with killing him. That's all what happened, I swear. Okay, that's a bunch of new info. They went into the back room? Huh. So now you're telling us that moments before the victim was killed in the storeroom, you in fact encountered him in the main part of the shop. Um, well, yeah. So sorry. Err. You find yourself at an interesting juncture. This changes matters considerably. But, but, honest, governor, this time. This time, Nash, this time. We ain't got nothing more to hide. <laughs> Van Zeeks looks incredibly annoyed now. Uh, who wouldn't be? His witnesses have committed, like, perjury, like, what, four times in a row now? This is closer to what the standard Ace Attorney's perjury record is. <laughs> hey, uh, coach for the diversion, we proceed with cross examination. Yes, my lord. This is it. The moment I've been waiting for. Alright, we're gonna press every statement and we're gonna get beats. Hold it! Hold it. When you say geezer, I presume you mean the victim and proprietor of the shop, Mr. Windybank. Who else? Sorry, I mean, that's right! We was keeping a close eye on the entrance to the gaff, obviously. But we never thought no one was gonna come out of the back room like that. The back room being the pawnbrokery storeroom. Yeah, that must be where he popped up from. Only place it could have been. So it would seem the victim was already in the storeroom when these brothers entered the premises. Which means Jenny must have been in there at that point as well. But that doesn't make sense, does it? If Gina had threatened Mr. Wittybank into the storeroom with her at gunpoint, then why would he have emerged from the same room all alone when the brothers arrived? Oh, I... don't know. Did you see the accused at the time? What, the mortal? Couldn't tell ya. No way, Carba! We had bigger fish to fry then. I mean, the old geezer just lost it. Yeah, this is pretty much just flying in the face of every other piece of evidence we've received so far. You mentioned that Mr. Winniebank shouted those words in your previous testimony too. However, you claim that you heard him yelling them on the other side of the storeroom door. Oh, um, <laughs> did we? But the truth is, he was shouting those words at you, wasn't he? Er, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. Was the victim, Mr. Windybank, wielding a gun at the time? Was he ever? Blimey, lummy! A great ugly barrel he had, pointed straight at me frontispiece! So, what you're saying is, you definitely saw Mr. Windybank with the gun at that time, is that right? It is, Gov, it is, spot on. And all of a sudden he came at us, he did! It was Bedlam, I didn't know what was going for who. We were clearly all going for each other. Like Nash said, we thought we had it. I mean... We're no geese that the bloke was strong as an arm and chucked me over the counter. Hold it! Wait a second. Yes, I noted that you mentioned the counter in your previous testimony too. Well, yeah, of course we did. He knocked over a load of books, a candlestick, and some skull whatnot. Then got tangled up in some marionette, what knocked over a picture frame, what knocked over them scales on the floor. So in fact, it wasn't the sound of the gunshot that shocked you and made you knock those things off the counter. Well, big bravia went flying over the counter like a gunshot, I can tell ya. Then the old geezer pinned him. He did, Nash, he did. If you hadn't been there, the bloke would have flattened me like a bloomin' pancake in seconds. At the time in question, the alarm was raised at the local police station via a secret cable from the pawnbroker. There is a button on the counter used to activate it, which was, which was presumably pressed by the victim. That's right. When the brothers fled the scene and back onto the street, they ran straight into the arriving police, didn't they? Well, Mr. Windybank, he did everything he could to protect the shop. Hold it! 
Were you intending to shoot Mr. Windybank? No, 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 never. I, I, I was just, you know, looking out for me, bro, weren't I? He was being flattened. Don't forget. By a man whose shop was being burgled. Yes. And then the man fled into the store when you pointed your gun at him. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. He shoved me away and ran off through that door and shut him in. So in. Something about that last remark. Something that doesn't quite ring true. Hmm, I wonder why Mr. Win Winnebank ran away into the storeroom. What? Well, according to what everyone's saying, Ginny was in there waiting for him, with a gun. Ah, yes, that's right. Gina allegedly used Mr. Winnebank's gun to threaten him and force him to open the storeroom door. In which case, how did the gun end up in Mr. Winnebank's hands again? I have no idea, but that is strange, isn't it? This little inconsistency could be significant. I should make a mental note of it. Look, the point is, me and me bruv here. That's right, Nash, that's right. Me and me bruv here. Never had nothing to do with killing him. That's all what happened, I swear. You say you had nothing to do with it. Nothing at all. Nothing, gov, nothing. The old geezer went and shot himself in the back room, didn't he? Locked it was from the inside. We know it was because we tried to open it. But it's a decent door, that one, good and strong, wouldn't budge an inch. So in the end, the situation remained unchanged. Inside the storeroom with the pawnbroker, there was only one other person. The sole person who could possibly have shot the victim, the accused, Miss Gina Lestrade. Ah. Hmm. It would indeed appear so. I see you to that, Council. I don't know. Was there anyone else apart from Gina who could have possibly have shot Mr. Windybank? Hmm. At this point, I don't know if we have enough evidence to say so, but... Uh... Hmm. We came out and then came back, and then went back in. Unless they're saying they could have shot him through the door, but there's no gunshot... There's no bullet holes in the door itself, so... But I feel like I have to say that could have been at this point. Hmm. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin. Eh, what? What's that look for? From the moment you admitted that you've encountered the victim face to face that night, the course of this trial changed completely. It did! What is your point, my learned friend? The question we must answer is, who could have shot Mr. Windybank? And it is the belief of the defense that the defendant is not the only possible answer at all. You have my attention. In that case, let us return to this plan on the premises. The victim was killed in the storeroom, which was locked from the inside. Those are the facts. So pray, what other possible answer to the question of who shot the man could there be? Counselor, there is no the right answer to the court in respect of two conundrums. Two? My lord? Twice as many chances to be right, maybe. Indeed, namely. Avoid location of the culprit of the victim, and furthermore, where was the victim at the time? Understood, my lord. Are you alright, Runo? I'm not entirely sure, but there's one thing I am sure about. If I can prove that there's a credible new alternative to what happened, it would change Gina's prospects hugely. So now, time for some clarity. Show the court on this plan the answers to the questions posed by his lordship. If you believe someone else could have killed the victim, indicate from where that person could have fired the gun. Hmm. Okay, I'm actually not sure. I'm gonna have to take a look at the evidence again real quick. Um... Okay, we know for sure that he was shot while in the storeroom. Right? Do we? I 
Alright chat, don't spoil me on anything else, but can I trust this? If like does if does the game labeling it for me mean that yes the blue the blue one is Pop Windy Bank? Can I trust this information? Like is this is this Pop Windy Bank's blood? Because I'm thinking what if we got it wrong and like this is someone else's blood and this is his blood because we never actually positively identified it as such but okay so we can take we can take this evidence as presented to the player as true all right so this is accurate got it got it so it's not that it's not that we got the blood samples wrong and he was shot outside He was shot from from the okay, shot from the back on a gently rising diagonal trajectory. That could mean that he was standing and someone shot him from the floor, as the premise is, or potentially he could have been fallen over on the floor and someone shot him in the back from above. Right? That would give that same angle. Postero interior bullets. It just it just means that he was shot from the back and like somewhere somewhere from behind. Diagonal down. Diagonal down would count. Especially since he's lying down like this, you know. So there's a good chance he was just shot in the back as he was lying on the floor. And the fact that he's lying on the floor directly in front of the door is suspicious. I don't think the gun itself is going to give us any other information to... Alright. Yeah, that's the only that's the only working theory I have right now. He was shot from outside the storeroom in, into the storeroom from the back. I don't have any evidence to like definitively prove that at the moment, but I'm gonna I'm gonna present that as the as the premise, I guess. Take that! The defense believes that the culprit could have shot the victim from this location here. And in answer to the second question. Assuming the culprit fired from the location indicated, where was the victim at the time? Directly behind the door? Take that! The culprit shot the victim from outside the storeroom. Continue. Mr. Windybank died instantly from a bullet wound in his back. Looking at the stain of blood on the storeroom floor, it doesn't appear that the body was moved off to death, which tells us that he was almost certainly shot while he was in the storeroom. However, the crucial point is, where was the shooter when the fatal bullet was fired? So you were at him, and you saw fire from out the shot was fired from outside the storeroom. Well, according to the Skulkin brothers earlier testimony, I pulled me gun on him and he legged it through that door into the back room. If Mr. Whittybank ran away through the door, we have to assume that the door was open at the time. Ah! That's a good point, that's a good point. It was at precisely that moment when the victim was fleeing for his life that these brothers had the perfect opportunity to shoot the man in the back once he was inside the storeroom. Nah! Hmm. Come to think of it, do you remember what the prosecutor said at the start of the trial? Moving on to the findings of Scotland Yard's coroner. His report states that the bullet entered the body on a rising diagonal trajectory. It means the victim was likely shot by someone significantly shorter in height than himself. Poor man, shot while he was running as fast as he could to safety. Ah, of course! He would have been leaning forward as he was running away. So even if the bullet was fired horizontally, it would still have entered his body on an upward trajectory. So the culprit isn't necessarily someone shorter than Mr. Winniebank. Objection! I'm sure my learned friend can't have forgotten that the storeroom door was found closed and locked from the inside. 
You claim the victim was shot as he fled into the room. Do you also claim this corpse was dexterous enough to turn the key in the lock? Ah, but... but... What if someone else locked the door? Yes, there is someone else who could have locked the storeroom door. Is that so? Very well then, current show presenting your hypothesis to the court. In the scenario just described, the defense is asserted that the victim was shot from outside the storeroom. In which case, who shot and locked the storeroom door from the inside? Hmm. Process of elimination says that it's Gina, right? I guess she got spooked, she heard the gunshots from outside and she shut the door and locked it to prevent the thieves from coming in. Right? That would make sense. Take that! Obviously, the person who locked the door was the only other person inside the storeroom at the time. The defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Objection. That's absurd. You're suggesting that the accused deliberately engineered the sealed room. For what possible reason? Such actions would only serve to tighten the noose around her neck. I'm inclined to agree, I must say. Well, Counsel? Uh, yes, that's a tricky one, that, isn't it? Um, it's not that tricky, she heard gunshots from outside, so she got spooked, right? Oh, Frank, no sense no place in my courtroom, Counsel. Remember that, please? But of course Janie would have locked the door. It almost goes without saying, doesn't it? It, it does. Well, if I was Ginny in that situation, I know I would have locked the door as quickly as I could. I mean, those two burglars had just fired a gun in her direction, hadn't they? Oh yes, obviously. Before the two brothers arrived, Miss Lestrade and Mr. Windybank were in the storeroom together. Now, I don't know what went on between them at that time, but at some point, Mr. Windybank must have heard the intruders breaking into his shop and left the storeroom. Intruders, eh? That's us, bruv. If your theory is correct, that would leave the accused alone in the storeroom. Yes, it would. Then, probably only moments later, the victim fled back through the storeroom door hoping to escape danger. Hit in the back by the bullet, Mr. Winnibank fell to the floor where he was, just inside the storeroom. And what have we to ask and what we have to ask ourselves now is, what would the defendant have done in that moment? Uh, I, I see where you're going with this. Outside the storeroom was a terrifying killer who had just murdered Mr. Windybank. As soon as that thought struck Miss Lestrade, she slammed the door shut and locked it. In order to save her own life. Hold it. But, but I ain't, I mean, we ain't the ones who done it. We ain't gov, we ain't, you gotta believe us. I mean, come on, we never should know one. Objection. That's blatantly untrue. I know for a fact that you would. Because before my own eyes, you shot Mr. Herlock Sholmes. There is only one logical conclusion here. Mr. and Mr. Skalkin, you brothers had every opportunity to have been the true perpetrators of Mr. Winnebank's murder. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh. Nah! Where, where does this leave us? You mean to say it wasn't the pickpocket who shot the pawnbroker after all? I should have known it was those three brothers. They look as shady as a dense forest. Tree Brothers. That was amazing, Bruno. All the members of the jury seem to be firmly on your side now. I know, first time ever, and probably the last. Well, I think you've done it. Surely they have to give, the, give a verdict of not... <laughs> yeah, it's too early. The case isn't over yet. An admirable effort, my learned friend. What's this now? He's laughing? I think I know why. There's one very big inconsistency. Yeah, I think I know why. This is their gun. Single round was fired. This is their gun. Single round was fired. This gun shot Holmes. Ergo, this gun is the one that was used to shoot him. So where did the third gun shot come from? Yeah, exactly. Shot number one. Shot number, uh, well, f one shot went into Sholmes, one shot went into Windybank, one shot... Well, 
Wait. Is there a third? Is there a third bullet? I thought the inc okay. I'm thinking the inconsistency is that this is the gun they were holding. It's not like they stole this gun and then shot him with it. Gina was holding this gun, so it couldn't have been. Well, it couldn't have been this one anyway. Like it doesn't matter. Like that's also a contradiction, you know. The 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 gun that the gun that was used to kill the pawnbroker is in the wrong place. So that's still that's still an inconsistency. Yeah. You find the situation amusing, Lord Van Zeeks. How is it find a defensive argument most persuasive? I dare say. Such chicanery is the bread and butter of the street performers in your provincial eastern nation. But such blatantly malicious conjuring tricks amount to nothing more than inexcusable petrifoggery here. There's one in Miss in Windy Bang, one on the Canada, the third show was fire homes. Oh, right. Right, right. I kept thinking <laughs> Ah, that's that's where the third bullet is. Cause I kept thinking oh, not this one. They didn't make it they didn't make it clear that the bullet was No actually no, they did. They were operating to get the bullet out, right. I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So bullet number one in the victim, bullet number two in the calendar, and bullet number three in Holmes. For some reason I thought this bullet that ended up in the calendar was the one that shot Holmes. With. So I thought I thought the green blood was Holmes's blood. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I missed that detail. Wow. I just glossed over it. Didn't I didn't pick up the significance of him going undergoing surgery to get the bullet out. Yeah, that, that I I'm I'm just realizing that now. Wow. Okay, they covered that pretty well. The hypothesis you put forward so ostensibly credibly cannot and will not stand. Because, you see, it contains a fatal flaw. A, a fatal flaw? Do you mean to tell me that you're unaware of your logic's failing? I say, Lord Van Zeeks, might be an idea to explain this bali conjuring trick or whatever it is to the troops on the ground, hmm? The fatal flaw in my learned friend's argument is really very simple to understand. Assuming you're not too dim-witted to count bullets. By George, count bullets? Oh dear. He noticed then. Huh? What's everyone talking about? Council. Uh, yes, sir. Tell the court. How many bullets are found at the scene of the crime? Um, two. Two bullets. Correct. The first, that which hit the victim in the back, ending his life. And the second, that which struck the detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, on his arrival at the scene. Indeed. The investigator the victim shot the damage caused by the second bullet at the end of proceedings. The bullet which injured Mr. Sholmes appears to have passed through his body to strike the calendar. You see, I made that mistake too. I just assumed that was the case. Your lordship's understanding is correct. Furthermore, we know there are two firearms involved in the incident. The, re the revolver belonging to the victim, Mr. Windybank, and the Skulkin Brothers revolver. The evidence shows that a single bullet was fired from each gun. Yes, indeed it does. A single bullet from each. Now then, my learned friend. You yourself told the court only moments ago. That these two brothers shot Mr. Herlock Sholmes right before your eyes. Yes, I I did. Oh my goodness, I, I think you'll find that if a single bullet was fired when the brothers gun him Mr. Sholmes, it means Wendy Bank not shot by same gun. Stop. Only one bullet. Stop. Okay, no, that 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 is the contradiction I presented. Exactly. Yes, this neat one is street performed presented an ostensibly credible argument. However. It was never anything more than a diversionary trick, with no hope of standing up to scrutiny. Ah! So that's where we prove that no, the third bullet went into Shom, so like, the bullet in the calendar is a completely different one. Right? That's where we're going with this? <laughs> it's funny every time he just flings the whole bottle into the gallery. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging the dregs of this hallowed nectar into the public gallery. Lord Van Zeeks! But wait, but you'll now need to find this third bullet. Didn't the third bullet hit Holmes? Oh, wait, no, huh? Chad, are you getting ahead of me again? Are you spoiling me? <laughs> Hello? 
I assume the bullet used to shoot Holmes is still was in Holmes until they removed it via surgery. But this bullet passed through him? Okay, so the green blood is him. Is his then. Is it? It's somewhere. Okay, see you you got ahead of me there, chat. I wasn't I wasn't thinking about the possibility of a third bullet. I was just thinking the guns were in the wrong place. Which was the contradiction that got brought up. You got ahead of me there. This court needs to open its eyes. The accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, is no ordinary little girl. Despite her young years, she can, regrettably, no longer be described as a juvenile. No, the person in the dock is far from a law-abiding citizen. She has a past riddled of criminal conduct. The audio cuts out? Chat, wait, hang on, is this a game audio? Everything still just a bit of crackling. Okay, my headphones just cut out. Give me a sec. It's weird, I heard audio for a second there. Hmm. Sorry Jack, give me one second. Technical issues. I may not have audio, but if the stream has audio, then that's all good. Uh, we can just keep going. The truth is, the accused broke into the pawnbroker on the night in question with loathsome intent. As we can see beyond doubt in this print, which depicts her threatening the victim with the murder weapon. And I have here in my possession one more piece of evidence the prosecution wishes to present. What, only now? I see. Holding on evidence until now, huh? That disc. I'll be taking that whatever it is on McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine. That is mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGilded has to be taken in as evidence now. Yes, that music box disc. McGilded's music box disc. The very day before the hateful murder of Mr. Windebank, the accused attempted to make up with this article, which clearly doesn't belong to her. I would have none of the subtlety of a pickpocket, I might add, but by brute force and brazen impudence. Who gracious! Make no mistake, any sympathy for the accused on account of her years is misguided and dangerous. There are no depths to which this girl would not stoop if pushed, no crime she would not commit. The court forgets that fact at its peril. Hmm, I see. I think it will be good to take this video watch this into evidence, Council. As a grim testament to the defendant's character. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks, I, um. Inspector Gregson? What? Yes, Inspector. We had a meeting yesterday at the yard at the prosecution service and, um, I, I think it was agreed that the disc wouldn't be used as evidence. What's this all about? Why is the inspector acting strangely? Hmm. That's the first time he said anything to Van Zeeks at all. 
I am unaware of any such meeting. But, but those were the instructions right from the top. The government bigwigs were insistent. Inspector, I am the prosecutor, and I alone determine how to present my case. Your warning is noted. Thank you. Hmm. The prosecution wishes to proceed with submitting this disc as evidence, my lord. Indeed. Bailiff. All right. Finally. Finally, we got this. Can we remove the label? From my gilded. That's the man you defended in court a couple months ago, isn't it, Reno? Yes, or rather, mistakenly defended. I wonder what his name is doing on the back of this disc. That's a question I'd love to know the answer to myself. There's probably something written on the back of it, isn't there? I'm willing to bet. Oh, Runo, look! This is blood! Yes, you're right. Just a small smear, but definitely blood. Actually, I feel as though I might have noticed that before. Haha, then it's my time to shine again. I thought I'd be waiting forever. Alright, hold still at that disc, Reno. Can we get this done quickly, Iris? In a flash! Green? Green. Ooh, a lovely bright shade again. Wait, that color. What is it? It's just that green, it... It's not the first time we've seen that color, is it? Okay, so I guess that confirms it then. It's not Holmes's blood. Then whose blood is it? That's really weird, hang on. Hmm. It's not Mason's blood. It was in the same jacket as Mason. This was already there before like on the first day where we were at the shop right when the when the coat was being claimed the blood was already there right yeah so it's definitely not ho yeah green is not Holmes's blood as well then that that that, that, that seals the deal for sure Yeah, this is, this is weird. I don't know where this is going. The prosecution has established the accused's motive, opportunity, and baseness of character. There is nothing more to add. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I await your informed decisions and rest my case. I don't believe it. I had the jury on my side for once for all five minutes. Oh dear, it wasn't even for five minutes, Runo. My lord! Wonder if I might say something at this point. Read, Mr. Foreman. Been stumbling about in a bit of a fog up to now, if truth be told, but all of a sudden. The answer's barely obvious to me, my men. There's only one thing for it. Oh no! Hey, well, the call is here on the jury. Ladies and gentlemen, you represent your leaders as the defender's culpability. Guilty. 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 Oh, guilty again? Guilty. Guilty. Are we gonna have to do another guilty. summation? Guilty. Yeah. Yes, we do. There's no way this is game over, so we gotta do it again, I guess. Hey, look at this, it's not a jury, it seems. You have eliminated the impossible. Whatever remains must be the truth. That's that's my line. I wrote that for Hurley. Ah, how dare he use it against us? Don't worry, Iris. I don't think we're finished yet. There's still more to this case than we realize. It must be because there's one thing that I'm absolutely certain of. Gina didn't shoot Mr. Windybank. That's beyond any doubt. 
It is the extra Sherlock Holmes quote, yes. Hey, ready. Great up squadron is primed and ready for action, sir. I like how they're just like, they don't even ask anymore, they just know I'm gonna do it. Very good. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will need to display the wood grounds you have for the chairman, demon, and the man doing duty. Another round of judicial findings, the jurors' contentions. One's a rogue, always a rogue, I say. Hmm? Different breed for, to us law abiding citizens. There's only two bullets are found at the scene, I would say the whole case is done and dusted. You don't need a stereoscope to see the truth here. Every which way you look at it, there will always that pickpocket. Hmm, I never imagined that simple operation would cause me such grief. The accused attempted a theft on the previous day. I can see I'm in for a busy day ahead. I am ballistics expert. I have seen many shootings. There is nothing I do not know about guns. Alright. Old surgeon is talking about a thing again. Hmm. Have to admit, I was rather bowled over by the argument put forward by the chap in black. But when that fell apart like a house of cards, I saw that I'd jolly well been hoodwinked. Well, no more. Ugh. The whole courtroom is turning against me. It's not fair. Iris? That prosecutor's being mean. Just because Ginny's done some things she shouldn't have done in the past, that doesn't make her a murderer. Allow me to savor this fruity vintage, while I savor the spectacle of your fruitless debate on the matter. Here's to the truth coming out, eventually. There's an offer you in blue. Counselor, proceed to submission examination. Yes, my lord. This feels familiar. This is how we ended the last session too. Alright, let me press this guy. What what if it reveals that yeah he operated on Holmes and Holmes had the bullet in him? Bullet! Would you please stop muttering about things that have nothing to do with this trial, sir? The defendant's life is on the line here. Hmm, well the thing is. I couldn't really say that it is nothing to do with this trial, to be honest. Huh? I mean, there's no question the man was shot, but the bullet simply vanished from his stomach. It's quite inexplicable, don't you think? I almost don't want to ask, but this surgery you've been muttering about all this time, you were operating on... What was the fellow's name now? Herlick? No. Herlock? No. Herlock? Herlock Sholmes by any chance? Yes, good lord! It was that Herlock fellow! What? You're you're the surgeon that operated on Mr. Sholmes! That's right, using the very latest Anastasia techniques I might add, it was a fairly major op I can tell you. This is crazy. Let me see, the fellow was brought in not long after midnight if I remember correctly. He said he'd been shot by some criminal or other, so I opened him like a shot. But the funny thing is, I went over his insides of a fine tooth comb and couldn't find the bullet anywhere. So I'm afraid I had to throw up my hands and just stitch the fellow back up. I hate to state the obvious, but... Yes? Surely that's because the bullet is still at the scene of the shooting. The source of the is correct. As it's clearly shown in this photographic print, the bullet is a spoken word of fighter Mr. Jones in the stomach region. And I cleared his body and lodged into the shop wall where the calendar was hanging by the door. I think you'll find it's really quite simple if you just consider the problem three dimensional. Ha! Who do you think I am, son? Um, well, juror number four is about the best I can do. As soon as I saw the wound to the man's stomach, I flipped him over. Like a pancake? Uh, are you saying that you checked his back? Of course I did, and there wasn't a trace of injury. No sign that the bullet had left the body at all. What? That's the point! The only logical conclusion was that the bullet was still somewhere in the man's innards! Which is exactly why I said about slicing him up! And I'm still none the wiser even now! How many times do I have to say it? Can somebody please explain how it happened? Can someone please solve the mystery?
So Holmes did have the bullet in him. Okay. I thought we were going to have to prove that the bullet on the wall isn't from Sholmes because how could his... Now, now that we have a link to the disc, right? Holmes's blood couldn't have been on the disc as well, so we have to prove that. But I guess they're just like straight up saying that, no, the bullet... Like, <laughs> the bullet is still in Holmes. Maybe? I don't know. We'll, we'll see where this goes. It's almost as much of a mystery as how this jury was put together. It's true. Objection. I'm gonna pit this. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. Sorry, you'll be in kind of set better squadron leader. Oh, no, not yet? Okay. All fighting for a common cause, don't you know, my traps? No way to contradict one though. Okay. I wasn't ready. Yeah, man, how, how is it that these, <laughs> these juries constantly have people relevant to the case stuck in them? Like, what the heck? Alright, press. It! It's the number of bullets that you has you convinced. Only two bullets are fired, and the two guns that fired them have been examined by the police. When the parlor maid asks me how many are invited for dinner, I always tell her to count the table settings. Well, that's logical, I suppose. Although... Yes? Sometimes after dining, crockery does go missing. One or two guests rather like to find china. Does your employer dine with thieves? So I suppose... If there was another bullet somewhere of which we were unaware... I'd have to reconsider my position. The third bullet somewhere on the scene. Could that be possible? I can prove it! Allow me to show you then the third bullet. No, not yet. Oh, I thought that would just change- I thought that would change the statement so we can pit- Ah, damn it. Hmm. Yeah, I thought that would change the statement so we could pit them against each other, but oh well. Take that! It passes for a bullet as much as you pass for a lawyer, <laughs> my learned friend. Coming from you, I'm going to take that as a meaning, not much. In no way does it resemble a bullet. If that helps you understand my last remark. Uh. Okay. It wasn't it either. It's been a long day. <laughs> okay, I got it. See, I wasn't exactly sure what the structure is, you know. Well, I'll just make a safety save first. Okay. The Russian man is talking about guns at this. I thought she was just a tourist. Good day. I am visiting London for sightseeing. I would like to take bus to Crystal Tower, please. There's no way he's just a visiting tourist. So you're a ballistics expert. Who knew? I have much experience with guns. Ah. I have lived through many. How do you say? Um... Extreme... Um... Violent bath of... Um... No. Blood of... Um... Ah! Extreme violent blood baths, perhaps? Da! Ah, those! Extreme violent blood baths. English is very difficult tongue. Considering the sort of people you associate with, I'm surprised you still have a tongue. Anyway, if you have questions about bullets and guns, you ask me. There is nothing I do not know. No mystery I cannot solve. He's very confident in his knowledge of guns, that's for sure. But, if possible, please, only in Russian language. He's not very confident in his knowledge of English, though, is he? No? Still, we should bear it in mind. He's our man if there's a mystery about guns or bullets. Hmm. Yeah, we don't have enough evidence. 
So, okay. I guess we just press everything first. Just because Miss Lestrade has a history of pickpocketing, she must be guilty of murder. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well... Are all members of the British Army so quick to judge? I beg your pardon? Are you mocking Her Majesty's Armed Forces, the greatest military organization in the world? No, I'm simply illustrating my point. Making assumptions about people because they're a soldier or a pickpocket is wrong and dangerous. Hmm. Well, yes, might have a point there, I suppose. But let's not forget the girl had already shown she had it in her from before. She's clearly a criminal sort, true and true. Can't deny it. When you say that she's shown it, she had it in her, are you referring to this? Exactly. Tried to swipe that only a day earlier, hmm? Why am I mistaken? Not exactly. I mean that I was actually there at the time, it's hard to refute that. I've never actually seen the real thing. I can't wait to have a closer look at it. Oh yes, of course. Mr. Sholmes did use his caramel bars to make a copy of the disc, didn't he? And then ordered every type of music box he could find from across Europe. We still don't know what tune it plays though, do we? But I'd love to see how the original compares to Hurley's copy. Like good it's this. Could it be a clue somehow? Perhaps we should examine it in more detail. Well, we did that already, so we know that the... Uh... Oh, there's a blood was in there. Okay. So if I've understood correctly, you need two pictures, left eye one and a slightly different right eye one. Exactly, then you can see the scene in three dimensions. Like this. So if we have two bullets, I don't suppose you can see anything useful with them. Hmm, I think you'll find that no matter how much you squint, the truth of the situation always looks the same here. The only person who could have shot the victim is that girl in the dock. How can you be so sure of that? Think about it, the Skulkin brothers shot the great detective, didn't they? Yes, that's been mentioned once or twice. Well then, surely it's coming to focus now, isn't it? This is a waste of time. I'm not going to change this man's mind anytime soon. Hold it! Mr. Sholmes' surgeon is on the jury. I've experienced some coincidences recently, but this is ridiculous. I'm as surprised as anyone. But there's no question that Mr. Sholmes is shot. Well, that's what the police told me when they brought him in. How bad were his injuries, Doctor? He was in a bad way. He had lost a huge amount of blood, you know. And I suspect he was shot at quite close range, too. Because his skin was badly burnt around the point of entry. Burnt? As I said, I flipped the fellow over and examined his back, but there was no sign of an exit wound. Which is why I thought I'd better locate the lug and pop it out. And yet you say you found no bullet inside the patient. Well, I wouldn't have done, would I? Because it's in the wall of the pawnbrokers. But how did it get there? I need someone to solve this mystery before it drives me to insanity. Even if there's some expert in ballistics that could help, even if you look extremely untrustworthy. Okay, I get it. I get the hint. So if we just bring bullet on our hands. I get the hint. I know who to pit now. Got it. Pit this guy. And this guy. Objection. Those two statements clearly contradict the idea that all I do is pit Jews against each other. <laughs> Fair. Because that statement would not make sense. <laughs> they don't contradict. Ooh, a ballistics expert. Pitting. P I T T. On the night in question, Mr. Sholmes was shot by one of the Skulkin brothers. But since there was no sign of an exit wound on his back, we must assume the bullet didn't pass through. However, no bullet was found lodged in Mr. Sholmes' body either. Furthermore, a bullet was found lodged in the wall of the shop where Mr. Sholmes was shot. Juror number 6. Hello, my name is Velen. Pleased to meet you. This apparent contradiction in the facts is that is so clearly troubling juror number 4. Are you able to explain the mystery? I have seen very similar situation in Motherland. It was night. There was a blizzard. There was a running away along mountain road in freezing cold. Golly. The snow was piling high on both sides of the road. It was very narrow and dangerous. 
My pursuers had hunting rifles and they were on dog sleds. Mento no don't ask too many questions. I was shot from behind and I fell down in snow. And this situation was very similar to what I hear today from doctor. They could not find bullet in my body. And no sign of, how do you say, exit wound. Hey, you were the burger. Bullet never hit me. What? Well, if it never hits you, why did you fall down? Bullet hit frozen wall of ice very close to my side. What? One small piece, very sharp, broke away from lump of ice and pierced my body. It made deep wound that looked just like bullet wound. Good gracious. Of course, piece of ice quickly melted inside me. And that is solution to mystery of disappearing bullet. Really? Okay. Okay, I have a problem with this chat, and this is gonna sound really stu- like, This is gonna sound minor, but... That stretches my suspension of disbelief a bit. For one reason. Ice wounds, like shrapnel wounds, do not look like bullet wounds whatsoever. Right? Like IRL, they, shrapnel wounds and bullet wounds are easily discernible. And before, and like I was thinking, okay, but this is the... This is the 1800s. Maybe they don't know how to identify bullet wounds? They do. They do know how to identify bullet wounds. So how could they not tell that this wasn't a bullet wound? You know? Unless we're just saying that this sur like the only thing I can think of is that this sur this uh, surgeon is just extremely wa <laughs> extremely absent-minded. So it can't be that. Yeah. Okay, it's definitely not ice, either way. But but that doesn't answer the question at all. Hmm? The shooting happened in a pawnbroker shop. Not some snowy mountain road in another country. Just an idea, but we might not be looking at exactly the same scenario here. Yeah, I know, I know. But if we're saying shrapnel, right? What kind of shrapnel would leave a wound that is exactly like a bullet wound? That doesn't make sense either. And like a vanishing, a vanishing uh, piece of evidence too. Like, I, I actually don't know. Like, I, I, I haven't gotten it from this immediate premise yet. So I'm gonna have to keep going for a bit. Oh no. Where exactly was Hurley shot again? Um, well, according to the report, in his stomach. Sort of around this era, I think. Well, that's precisely why he always wears a little pouch on his belt. A pouch? Actually, I might have noticed something like that. Yes, a pouch. It's where he keeps tree glass files of very dangerous chemicals that he uses in his investigations. What? Really? Doctor, where is the pouch Mr. Sholmes is wearing? Uh, well... The fellow had nothing like that on his person when he arrived at the hospital as far as I remember. If I may. Lord Van Zeeks. Though I realize it is forbidden for the prosecution to interject during a summation examination. I should inform the defense that I have the pouch in question in the antechamber outside the courtroom. Okay. We're just getting new evidence now. Okay, I get it. I won't know until I examine it, sorry? As I understand it, when the police arrived on the scene and found Mr. Shom's injury, they removed the pouch in order to assess the wound. Ah, thank goodness. I thought I was getting forgetful for a moment. Since then, it has been in my safekeeping, along with all other evidence related to the case. I can personally vouch for the fact that it has not been touched since the incident occurred. Very well, we're extremely unconventional during the submission examination. I must remind the prosecution presents the item in question of all speed. Bring forth Mr. Herlock Shom's pouch. Yeah, Van Zeke doesn't seem like a crop attorney or anything. He's just a little he's a little he's a little racist, but he's otherwise playing by he plays by the book. Which is extremely rare in this series, let's be fair. Mm, I see. This is about one Mr. Jones and my question, is it? Look at that. One of the files is broken and the letter on the scorch flag. It's almost as if the file exploded. Exploded So that night. The bullet from the Skulking Brothers' gun struck Mr. Shones' pouch. And it was a glass foul exploding that caused the fellow's injury. This bullet did not penetrate victim, but was deflected into war of shock.
a delightfully complex aroma. Oh, it would have been a warmer judgment of at least. Though it has no bearing on the truth of this case. The bungling and burgling brothers shot the detective, and the accused shot the pawnbroker. The potent effects of the case remain unaltered. Uh. But at least the mystery is solved, I can sleep easy tonight. Thank you, young man. Da, thank you very much. Glad I could help. Need to use the ring on the show, the code is a question of Scruffy Porter's evidence. Her least pouch isn't Scruffy. Okay. Now we can look at this. Hey, there it is. I still have a problem with this. They should have found glass shards. They should have found the glass shards in Sholmes then if he got stabbed by the glass, right? Right? You're telling me they couldn't tell apart glass and bullet wounds? Like that's even more egregious. The the thing that caused the trauma didn't even like melt or disappear. There should be glass in him. Did they not remove the glass? Could they not tell? We're not gonna get any further explanation for that, right? We're just gonna we're just gonna accept that oh he wasn't actually shot. He was just hit by he was hit by glass shrapnel. Yeah, it will cause like a much different wound. Suppose it will cause a burn wound on Jones, which is never mentioned by anyone. I mean, burn burn aside. Oh wait, no, they did they did mention the burn. They mentioned burns around the entry wound, but that doesn't okay. That explains the burns around the entry wound, but that doesn't really matter. Like that doesn't really explain like where did the glass go? Shouldn't they have picked up pieces of glass out of him? You know, that part's a little dubious. Just that one's a little dubious. But okay, there's the bullet. It's really scorched badly just here. Oh, the strap is broken, look. This must be where the bullet hit then. Let me see. What? what the? Iris, look. Behind where the broken fowl was, do you see it? Ah, that's... The Skulkin Brothers' bullet. What a stroke of luck that it hit his pouch. This is an amazing discovery. What this means is... There were three bullets fired at Windybanks that night. We found exactly what the juror was talking about. The third bullet. It's time to press the juror again, I think. Ah, that's where we get it, huh? This flower has been smashed to pieces. Presumably, this is where the bullet struck. As soon as the bullet hit the chemical in that flower, there would have been a really big explosion. A big explosion? Well, Hurley's potions and chemicals are amazingly useful for the investigation work he does. But they're also quite tricky to handle, safely at least. They're very dangerous. Oh. I'm sure that when this file broke, the chemical inside would have ignited. Note to self, always walk on the right hand side of Sholmes in the future. The left is the danger zone. Now what, what would he even be carrying though? What, phosphorus? Surely not. These glass files are full of Hurley's homemade potions. Homemade? Yes, like fingerprint powder to show up where people have touched things, and scent amplifying solution to intensify a smell lingering on an object. That's amazing. They're all very easy to use, there's just one thing that you have to be careful of. They're all very flammable. Mr. Sholmes is a walking bomb. Either he's passionate about finding out the truth, or just oblivious to the dangers. Yeah, I'm just gonna chalk that one up to fantasy. This is the bullet that was fired from the Skulking Brothers' gun on the night of the incident. Yes, so it turns out it never actually entered Hurley's body at all. Thanks to the thick leather of that pouch he was wearing. It saved him. <laughs> Hurley's always lucky like that. Well, considering what he had to go through in the hospital, I wonder how lucky he really was. Oh dear, poor Hurley. Okay. Uh, someone struggling to order a hmm? Please, my lord. A little more time. After all, that's a new piece of evidence. 
There could be a valuable clue, and you can't afford to overlook anything here, Rinotsuki. There's still a way to turn this around somehow. I'm sure of it. Is this one bullet gonna turn everyone though? Here we go. The third bullet. <laughs> Literally the evidence, the third bullet. Take that. Take that! Here it is. We discovered it just now. Yes, on the night in question in Windybank's pawn brokery, another bullet was fired. Hold it. What is this new trickery, you Nipponese conjurer? Where did you find that bullet? It was lodged inside Mr. Sholmes' pouch. What? His pouch was removed from around Mr. Sholmes' waist before he was taken to hospital, and since then it has been touched by no one. Do you, you mean to say? The software I discovered about this at night. Yes, as your lordship has surmised, it hit this pouch. But that makes no sense whatsoever. We really know the word about the bullet fire to Mr. Sholmes. It's clearly visible to the photographic print. Ah. Two guns from the scene have already been submitted into the court record as evidence. Yes, that of Mr. Windebank and that belongs to the Skulkin Brothers. An examination of both guns revealed that only a single bullet had been fired from each. Ah, but, but that must mean... That's right. We now know that on the night in question, three bullets were fired. However, only two bullets were fired from the guns recovered from the crime scene. And until that incontrovertible con inconsistency is somehow explained, we cannot and must not pass judgment. Order, order, order! This complete the court is presented with new facts. Facts of the view is set, very conditions upon which the case against the defendant is unbuilt. This is my pejorative in this situation. I hereby temporarily suspend the submission and examination. But do preserve. What? Well, bring the witnesses back to the stand at once. Are you just gonna leave it on guilty then? Huh. Witnesses? Governor! Are you listening to the proceedings of the defense carried out the summation examination? We was, Governor, we was! Perhaps we can dispense with the tedious preamble. Simply answer this one question. A third bullet has been identified at the scene of the crime. What do you make of that? Make of it, Gov. I don't make nothing of it, nothing if I can help it. Um, is it one of yours? Go blind me, Gov, go blind me, not a chance! In that case, did you have an accomplice? What? Eh, what? Never! The Skunk and Brothers work alone! It's just the two of us, that's our trademark! How soon we forget poor Salki. Only two of the bullets from the crime scene originated from the firearms we have in evidence. The third bullet was fired from another gun. Where is it? Nummy. There's an it, Scratcher. Hmm. Counter in defense. Uh, yes. I would like to hear your thoughts regarding these new developments. Third bullet, the mysterious mission firearm from whence it came. Thinking back over all the testimony we've heard and all the evidence we've seen, I think I'm starting to form a picture. A picture of what really happened that night. My lord, I think it's clear what this third bullet tells us about the Skulking Brothers. They had a secret accomplice. They said about the, the third brother. Third brother. And by process of elimination, It's clearly Tobias Gregson! This guy has a moustache, this guy has a moustache, and this guy has a moustache! It's obvious! Wait, no! No! It's him! He has a moustache! He is the third Skulkin brother! He has the third gun! <laughs> 
It's him, man. It's him, isn't it? It's question mark, question mark, too. That's not even his real name. On that night at Windybank's pawn broker, the brothers must have been working with a third man. Um. The witnesses are clearly doing their best to cover up the existence of the existence of this accomplice. But the evidence all points to the fact that there was someone else present, someone carrying a gun. Objection! Objection. An accomplice, you say. Pixel. These protracted proceedings have already forced us to endure two submission examinations. Yet in all that time, there has been not a murmur of a third man. It is apparently a wraith like being exists. The court must be shown hard evidence. Without it, this fantasy will be crushed. Ah. The prosecution demands answers in two counts. First, proof, evidence, that his accomplice was ever at the scene of the crime. And second, the identity of this spurious character. The Skulkins are lying, I know that. But... How can I ascertain the identity of the person they are hiding? I'm supposed to prove the existence of this accomplice, and review the person's identity even. In response to the prosecution's demands, my lord, the defense is... Are we ready to present answers? It's the disc, the disc plus the damage in the wall, right? Right, he cut his fingers on it, right? That's where the blood came from, he cut his fingers on it. The defense is ready. I believe I can provide all the answers the prosecution demands. So, my Nipponi's friend, despite the swimming eyes, the swimming eyes, you seem to you seem to think you have something to say. This promises to be interesting. I have to push forward now. There's no other option. I need to use every single piece of evidence available to me if it will make a difference. In your case, counsel, I should present the evidence without delay. On the night in question, in the moments leading up to the death of the victim, what proof have you that there was a third intruder present at the scene? Blood samples, right? That. The evidence is right here, in this portfolio. Very true, the portfolio again, is it? Do you expect the court to rifle through your papers itself? Be more specific. You claim one of those blood samples proves the presence of this third intruder. Well, which is one which one is it? You presented the music box disc? Well <laughs> The music box this is how you link it to X Benedict, I guess. I'm uh, looking at here. There wish to be some green paint or such like around the world who in the middle of the calendar. That's a blood stain, my lord. A blood stain. Green blood? Curious, even for you. It's the court to understand that the intruder was some unhuman creature. <laughs> it's something developed by Mr. Herlock Sholmes. By the great detective! New invention! Stop. Not yet appeared in stories. Stop. It's this, you see. It doesn't have a name yet, though. This fog sprays a chemical that reacts with the different elements in people's blood to change its color. Different elements? The people's blood? Yes. Everyone's blood is slightly different, you see because it's made up of different elements. So by seeing what color it changes to, you can tell in a flash whose blood it is. Ooh, that brings the whole extra dimension to looking at blood. Talk of blood in courtroom stuff, very exciting stuff. As an example, this one shows the blood of the victim, Mr. Windybank. Ah, a striking blue. Yes, so you see, the green color of this blood stain on the, cal on the calendar shows that someone else was shot in the main part of the shop. No fire young man. Could be for some unrelated incident, couldn't it? No, it's not unrelated. The date showing on the calendar is the date on which Mr. Winnebank was killed. By golly! Therefore, we can assume that whoever was shot was shot on the same day. And whose blood is it? 
well, the skull converters in the stand don't appear to be suffering from any gunshot injuries. Which means it must be the blood of somebody else. The third intruder, in fact. Objection! Whose identity the court is still waiting to hear? You can't delay this any longer, my learned friend. Who is this alleged third intruder? It's... Egg Benedict. The man's name is Egret Benedict. Egret Benedict? Who the are you talking about, Counselor? He paid a visit to Windybank's pawn brokery on the afternoon before the incident took place. When the accused attempted to deceive the pawnbroker into releasing this article into her possession. That's right. The man identified by the defense, Mr. Egret Benedict, then attempted to take the article from the defendant by force. Broker! Uh, yes sir. I believe this filthy pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Yes, yes sir. The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel. And needless to say... Any music box this too. I just realized he does the funny poses. He does the turn around and funny pose. I didn't make that connection this whole time. God damn it, they got me. <laughs> this game is stupidly smart. The skulking poses, yeah, they're like turn turn face the back and then turn around and do that he's doing a variation of it but it's it's there inspector gregson was there at the time and can attest to what happened in the end it was the inspector himself who took this can you go over to the car inspector um yes my lord that's more or less what happened and in the interest of being thorough, I asked Windybank for a print showing the fellow. Taken from one of his red-handed recorder gubbinses. Yes, that's him talking to Mr. Windybank that morning. Do you claim this man is a British accomplice? Well, Mr. and Mr. Skulkin? Never seen the geezer before in me life! On me life, gov, on me life, never seen him! Oh, somewhat unsurprisingly, it appears the witnesses disagree with the assertion. I'm sure your lordship recalls my learned Nipponese friend's actual assertion, which was that he could prove the identity of the alleged accomplice. Yes, and I can. Then show us the evidence. I agree, we must see proof that the clean cut gentleman in the photograph is the filthy criminal you say he is. This is the last piece of evidence. I've had a feeling that something has been missing in this trial from the very start, but now I'm going to drag it kicking and screaming into the courtroom. Are you present your answer to the court then, Counselor? Yes, my lord. The defense will present the evidence now. Proof that the man pictured in his photographic print was in fact the person struck by the third bullet. Ta da! As I mentioned before, on the afternoon of the day in question, the defendant attempted, deceitfully, admittedly, to reclaim this disc from Windybanks. It is any really information Naked Benedict appeared in the scene, I believe. His man intended to prolong the article in the defendant's possession, no? That's correct, my lord. I myself was present at the time. It was following this that a minor incident occurred. But of course, sir, uh, here is the disc for you. I'm gonna drag him into court, that's what. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to Style. Yeah, see, he does the funny pose. Wait a minute, that disc. It's mine! Rip. Ah, but what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You, you've drawn blood, you filthy animal! Being a music box disc, it has countless small but sharp metal protrusions over its surface. Those protrusions caused Mr. Benedict's finger to bleed, and the resulting smear of blood is still visible on the disc now. Goodness, the worst thing is it? 
My assistant and I have just analyzed the bloodstain here in this very courtroom. Using my trusty fogger gun. And that's why she's on the de on the bench, because we couldn't analyze that otherwise. Yes, and we added the results to this portfolio. I say, it's green. It's exactly the same color as the blood around the calendar. The evidence is conclusive. The man calling himself Mr. Eckert Benedict, who was in Windy Banks earlier in the day, is the accomplice who was present at the scene of the crime that same night. So there was someone else there. Look at those two brothers now, they're sweating buckets. Oi, who are you talking about? It's bullying in here. My lord, it is the opinion of the defense that Mr. Eger Benedict should be summoned to the courtroom to testify. Hmm. We certainly see that we can ever afford to ignore the gentleman's apparent presence. Objection! This has gone on long enough now. This flagrant ignorance of the mechanics of law. Herlock Sholmes, you say? Yes, I've heard the name. The protagonist in a series of short stories where the vulgar passes, a god of detection or some such. And now you employ chemical substances devised by this fantastical persona in the highest court in the land. Do you expect us to take you seriously? The samples made by this plaything are not fit to be called evidence. Hmm. So the bloodstain turned the shade of green. What of it? Here's to you successfully proving that no other blood in the world would turn the same color. Ah, well. Ah, <laughs> there's the lake. And pray, do not even think of suggesting that we should take Mr. Sholmes' word for it. Ugh. Is he right? Is Mr. Sholmes' concoction a load of rubbish? There is a fair point. I don't know. I mean, he is a great detective. What are you talking about? We can't let him get away with that. We're just throwing it. We are just throwing it untested signs for in, like new forensics, expecting the court to believe it. I knew it would come to this. Of course, Mr. Sholmes' invention isn't going to be recognized by any official body. But what are the choices that I have? Hmm. I'm just remembering what Father Christmas over there said before. About how he was temporarily suspending the summation examination. Ah! In other words... The examination isn't over yet, is it? <laughs> in a summation examination, the decision as to whether or not the trial continues... Is in the hands of the six jurors, isn't it? So the way I see it... It doesn't matter what certain other people think of Hurley's invention. At least... Not for now. <laughs> yes, she's right! Young lady, you have quite a devious mind! It really just comes down to one thing. Whether these ladies and gentlemen of the jury... Are convinced by what you say, Runo? Is that about right, would you say? Or did I misunderstand something? Unbelievable. Mr. Shones' partner is a force to be reckoned with. Iris Wilson, sharpshooter. As an extreme reason of the situation for an entirely unexpected source, it must be acknowledged that the previous summation examination has yet to reach its conclusion. This is absurd. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court now looks to you for your final leanings in this matter. As far as it is of Her Majesty's Britain, I'm sure you will come to fair and just conclusions. So then, state your final decisions in turn, please. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not, Not guilty. guilty. Not guilty. 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 Not guilty. Not guilty. That's a fault. It's still a fault. It's split. Interesting. To call guilty, for call not guilty. This is the outcome of the summation examination. Objection! My lord, with all due respect, this is an outrage. The prosecution refuses to accept this decision. Oh, what girls? If these jurors are persuaded by some half baked concoction devised by pretender to real policemen, then they are too ignorant to be trusted of the judgment of anyone's guilt. I'm sorry, Lord Benzies, but the outcome of the summation examination cannot be ignored. The trial will continue. Ah. Ah. Nevertheless, we find ourselves in a rather awkward situation. The defense has very reasonably requested a subpoena of a new witness. I certainly fear it will be impossible. What? 
The name the other one gave himself, Eggert Benedict, is quite clearly false. I don't believe it. Just when I managed to prove the man was dead that night. Um, could, could I say something? Hmm? Who was that, please? Who spoke? Um, it was me, my lord. Juror number five. What have you to say, madam? If possible. Inspector. Eh? Me, ma'am? I wonder if you might show the photographic print to me again. The one in which the gentleman is shown. Uh, right, yes. This one, you mean? Of Mr. Benedict. Are we really gonna get another lucky break from the jury? <laughs> yes, there's no doubt in my mind. Juror number five, you don't mean to say... You know this man? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah. This this series this okay, Grady's attorney has been pretty good about like keeping things grounded and believable. But the jury is the number one source of the ASX Machina in this entire series so far. It stretches my belief. But I you know, I, I can suspend my disbelief perfectly fine, it's Ace Attorney. It's just that because everything else is so grounded, it's very noticeable that the jury is the source of all the DSX machina. You know? <laughs> is it fair for me to say that? Yes, I know him. What? No! Good gracious! Hora, hora, hora! Jury number five, how on earth? I am a communications officer, stop. As we can clearly see. The gentleman in the photograph is, stop. Also a communications officer, stop. He works in my office, stop. A very talented operator in fact, stop. He should be in your communication stations now, stop. Tapping away on the telegraph, stop. This doesn't seem right somehow. I can't put my finger on why, but it doesn't feel right. Hmm. I suppose we all imagine the accomplice would be some sort of hardened criminal. It's a bit unexpected to find out he has a respectable job by day, whatever he gets up to at night. Yes, I suppose that's it. I suppose that's why I felt something was wrong. If the gentleman does not communicate the state, shall we reveal the submit him within the hour? Open six, if you please. Yes, my lord. Make the necessary arrangements with all haste. As your lordship bids. The court will recess for an hour. A new witness arrives and shall reconvene to hear the gentleman's testimony. Inspector Gregson? Yes, my lord. I should like to hear from you specifically about events at the bond burglary on the day in question. Come to my chambers during the recess. Yes, sir, my lord. Very well. Court is adjourned to 1.40 p.m. Is this the first time they've used the, the term subpoena in... Uh in Ace Attorney, by the way. It's kind of funny, because that's a very common legal term, but it hasn't actually turned up until now, has it? But yes, you do subpoena a witness. Not not at this stage, not in the middle of trial, obviously. That's a that's a gameplay uh, exaggeration, but you do subpoena witnesses, that is true. Whew, alright. What a... Twisty turny trowel. So many jury summations. Don't tell me we have to do a third one after this too. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. It it is surprising that it's not that commonly used in the series. They just use summon him to court, that kind of thing. Alright chat, uh we'll call it at that for now. We will continue this probably tomorrow. Tune in next time, same time, same place, for more Law & Order, The Meiji Era.